Hello everyone, I'm Nemec Virus, and I'm bringing you yet another Minecraft commentary, as I promised I would. Uh, I know I'm not usually true to my word on that, but uh, this time I'm going to be. Um, I know I haven't uploaded in a couple of days, but that's because I've been trying to, like, think of a topic that I could talk about for about 25 minutes, you know, and not run into any roadblocks. And uh, before I get into that, you guys might be thinking, like, for those of you who have been with me the majority of the time anyway, you might be thinking, well, is this guy only going to upload Minecraft? And the answer to that is probably yes, um, because I don't have an HD PVR, so recording my games on my 360 is kind of hard. I mean, I have a Dazzle, but everyone on YouTube as well as myself is kind of a quality whore nowadays, and Dazzle just doesn't give you the quality that you're looking for, um, that, or that even I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably going to only, only be uploading Minecraft because, you know, Frap seems to run okay, and Minecraft seems to run okay with that, so, you know, Minecraft's probably going to be my only source of uploading, well, sort, not my source, my only thing that I'll be uploading, but, um, after that you might ask, well, does this guy only play Minecraft, and the answer to that, I kind of answered a few seconds ago, and that's no, um, <laughs> I, I, rarely ever play Minecraft actually I get these urges and I kind of binge um so you know um that said uh, that brings me to my topic that I want to talk about today and that's something I don't typically talk about um I mean I'm really into gaming and so are most of my friends but you know it's not something that you typically talk about among friends when you're playing video games because um more or less you're focused on the particular video game at hand um and that topic is uh my gaming history I kind of wanted to just like give you guys a little taste of, um, actually this is probably a pretty big taste of my gaming history, um, because I've watched other people on YouTube and, you know, I realized that my gaming history isn't quite the same, um, mostly because most people kind of stick to one brand or one console. Um, me, I kind of went all over the place, I didn't really stick to one particular brand, um, but... <laughs> It's still a pretty rich and um, varying history, so I think it'll be pretty interesting to talk about. And I'm going to name some of my some of my favorite games from each console. Um, and these are only the consoles I've owned, by the way. These aren't like consoles that I've just played on. Um, I only say I have favorites from consoles that I've actually played on. And I only had I've only had about four consoles in total. Uh, the first one being the N64, then the GameCube, then the PS2, and then the Xbox 360. So as you can see, I'm kind of all over the board. I started out Nintendo, then I went to Sony, then I went to Microsoft. Um, so without further ado, let's get into things, because I probably can't keep talking like this before I run out of time. Uh, so let's see, uh, starting off with the N64, the first game that I have listed here is Donkey Kong 64. And, you know, that game was fantastic for, you know, a kid my age, because when I first got my N64, I was about... Uh, six or seven years old, somewhere in there. Um, probably eight, maybe even. But I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. But a kid that age playing Donkey Kong is like the same thing as giving that kid, you know, ice cream for life. <laughs> you know, at least in my case, and from a gamer's perspective, anyway. Um, that that game was uh, <laughs> I loved that game. The barrel blasting in particular. That was probably my favorite little mini game of the whole game. Um. Unfortunately, I can't remember back far enough um, and say that I beat it or not, but I know I did get decently far. Um, and I know the next game uh, kind of related to Donkey Kong is Banjo-Kazooie. I know they're not 100% related, but, you know, they had a similar graphic style. Um, I, I can't... Banjo-Kazooie is one of my all-time favorite games. I'd probably say I liked it a little more than Donkey Kong 64, even. Um... But I can't say I beat that one either. I know I didn't beat that one because uh, I didn't get that sense. I, when I tr remembered it, I didn't get that sense of like I, I yeah, I finished that game, you know. But uh, I still played it quite a lot more than Donkey Kong 64 even. Um, now the next game, um, it's, it was actually one of my first games. Uh, it might seem a little strange, but my parents are a little. My parents are not a little. They're pretty laid back. Um, and that game was Mortal Kombat Trilogy. It was a compilation of the first three games, um, like all the characters and st all the arenas and stuff onto one disc, and uh, I love Mortal Kombat, that's all there is to it, because I've been playing it since, since a really young age, and uh, just that game, 
like blew my mind sure at first it was like oh my god what am i playing and what is this and uh, as i got into it more you know i i just loved it i can't i can't like explain it other than that i never stopped playing it like it was a daily thing for me i'd just go on play Mortal Kombat. um and even though i love Mortal Kombat so much i can't say i own the most recent one which is Mortal Kombat 2011 and you know that's more or less because I don't have the money to spend on it and I don't feel it's necessary for me to have but so you know that's a little shaky but by the way as I think about it some of these uh, series that I like they'll make comebacks in later consoles and you'll see that as I go on um let's see here GoldenEye 007 is uh, my next game that I had listed and you know who hasn't played that that owned an N64 I mean if you had an N64 and you played, you know, games that were rated teen or above, you eventually got your hands on GoldenEye 007. That game was fantastic. Um, it was my first first-person shooter. So, you know, that that really brought in that whole new experience for me, that first-person perspective, you know, shooting people, you know, that, 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 uh, that was a real trademark game in my gaming history, and it'll go down as also one of my personal favorites. But going kind of hand-in-hand hand with GoldenEye is uh, Perfect Dark. Uh, in case you didn't play it, um, there were a lot of 007 GoldenEye references in that game. Like on the gun walls in the training area, there were like guns from GoldenEye 007 on the walls and stuff. So that was a really cool uh, Easter egg for me. And so Perfect Dark was really fun for me too in that aspect. Had the similar play style. I'm not sure if it was developed by the same people. It might have been. But um, either way, great game. Loved it. Uh, let's see. Next we have Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Um, if you play that game, you'll know it was great if you love Star Wars as much as I did as a kid. Um, you know, it it's just the whole killing Wampas, flying X-Wings, and taking down walkers with the cable. And, you know, that was, that was a really fun part of the game for me was that mission, actually, because I got to, like, tie the rope around flying the, flying the, uh, I can't remember what those other ships are called off the top of my head right now. But, uh, you know, shooting the cable and tying them and making them fall, you know, that was that, that was really cool. <laughs> um, moving on to some more racing-type games, which I don't typically play nowadays, but... Um, the first one I have listed, obviously, is Mario Kart 64. That was kind of the, uh, you know, over-the-top kind of cartoony racing game that I played. And if you played Mario Kart 64 on the N64 back in the day, even if you didn't like it as much, if you remember back to that like I do, it was it was a fantastic game, even if you didn't like it at the time. But it was it was a fun game at the time, you know. One of the best games of its time easily. Also going down as one of my personal favorites of all time. The the next one might the next one however might surprise some of my friends and that's because it's NASCAR 99. <laughs> this uh this game was fun for me because I had the steering wheel and the pedals. So, you know, it, having that extra accessory made that game, like, twice as fun as it ever would, would have been for me. Uh, so, you know, I always, I always like to, you know, pretend I, I was, I had a lot of fun just driving that. Pretending I was, like, driving on the road and stuff. And everyone, you know, I was one of those people who would just turn around and go backwards on the track. When you collided with someone, you went flying. That was probably the best part about that, best thing about that game. Uh... The next game, though, I'm not sure if many people played. I know I played it a shit ton. Um, it's called Top Gear Rally. It's another racing game. Probably one of my favorite racing games, even over Mario Kart 64. I played Top Gear Rally more than I played Mario Kart 64 or NASCAR 99. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't look that appealing nowadays, but back then, I loved that game. Everything about it was, like, so... I don't, I don't know, aesthetic. I just liked the environments and the cars, and, you know, it was... The cars weren't so, I don't know, like, modern, I guess. They, they didn't look like real cars, but they did at the same time, you know. It, it was fun, because I was always trying to unlock the better cars and stuff, you know. I can't really explain why I like that game so much. I just did. I think you had to play it as much as I did at the time. I don't know if it was popular or not, but anyway. Um, on to the next one, which is NFL Blitz. I mean, that game was fun for me because I, you know, I was the whole Mortal Kombat kind of guy by that time. So, when I played NFL Blitz and I found, like, I could just pound the shit out of the people I just tackled with my, like, you know, with my fists and belly flop them and shit, you know. I, <laughs> that was just, uh, uh, that was over the top, but it was hilarious for me and I loved it. Uh, let's see. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the very first one. 
Um, I loved that game. I loved everything about it. My favorite two levels are probably the warehouse level and the downhill jam. Um, you know, I was really into skateboarding at the time. Like, I didn't actually skate, but I liked watching people skate. Oh, here's where I died for the first time. Yeah, I was totally stupid. I knew that spider was there. I knew he was going to kill me, but I still went. Anyhow, <clears throat> back to Tony Hawk's uh, Pro Skater. Uh, actually, I kind of lost what I was talking about. But yeah, oh yeah, I was really into skateboarding at that age. I watched it. I didn't actually do it. Um, but I knew who Tony Hawk was. I knew who all the people in the game were, basically. And uh, so the fact that there was a video game out there was like Jesus for me because I was, <laughs> I was able to like play a game of the people that I watched on TV and actually play as them. So, you know, that was the first game where I really had that experience. Um, that were real people anyway. I know Goldeneye, there are probably movies out for it and stuff, but, you know, James Bond isn't a real person. But, <laughs> be, but because Tony Hawk and, like, Bucky Lassick and Jamie Thomas and all them were, like, real skaters, I knew that I was actually playing as a real person. So it was, it, it gave it a little bit of an incentive for me. Um, and the last game for the N64 that I have listed is Gauntlet Legends. And that was a sort of a class-based, uh, free-roam role-playing game, kind of. Uh, basically, you there were four people you could choose from. can't remember what they were. I know there was a wizard, an archer, a warrior type, and I can't remember what the fourth type was, but... Um... You would walk around. You'd walk around slaying a bunch of enemies. There were like spawners where enemies would come out of, and you had to go and destroy the spawners and get to the end of the level and fight the boss. And you collected power ups and stuff along the way to fill up your like super meter. If I don't know if it was actually called a super meter, but that's what I'm referring to it as. And you know, once your super meter got full, you'd unleash your super attack, and it would annihilate a bunch of enemies, or you'd save it for the boss, whichever. And. uh... I remember in particular the wizard, he like summoned a giant green skull and he launched it straight forward and it killed everything in its path. Uh, except bosses, of course, they, you had to hit them with that a couple times. But. Yeah, anyway, that basically ends it for uh, the N64 games that were probably my favorites. Well, that were those ones in particular were definitely my favorites, but I'm not sure if I missed one or not. Because, I, like I said, this is the second time I'm recording this and I actually remembered a couple more as I was uh, re-typing the list up. Um, anyway, moving on to the GameCube, uh, wow, I actually took a lot of time on N64, didn't I? But anyway, moving on to the GameCube, uh, first one was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, uh, that was my first modern racing game, I guess, uh, that was probably the last, like, real racing game that I got into, actually, because uh, I, I played that almost non-stop when I got it. Then, uh... The first Spider-Man movie came out, and then I got the game for that, and Spider-Man the movie, the game, was really fun for me, actually. I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, I don't know if you guys played it, but that game, for me, was really fun, because the movie was a huge thing, because it was, you know, so awesome for if you saw it and stuff, and, uh, oops, sorry, uh, so I was like... You know, I was like, oh my god, I'm playing a Spider-Man and uh, of the movie I just saw, you know. I really like making connections like that, if you couldn't tell. But, yeah, so that game was really fun for me. Um, next game is The Herbs. Uh, it's basically a city-based Sims game. Um, you lived in apartments instead of houses in the city and stuff. Um, really not much to explain there. You all know what The Sims are, I think. Um, but yeah, basically I like any Sims type game because I like building my own house and doing interior design and stuff. <laughs> uh, kind of why I play Minecraft too, but not 100% why. Oh, let's see here. I could do that in another video, I suppose. But Next game for the GameCube though is uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I know it was called Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. I'm not exactly sure if it was the exact same game though, but I, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was the GameCube version of that game. Um, <coughs> excuse me, my throat's a little sore, but, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle I played for, like, I could play for, like, five, six hours at a time, you know, because they had the chow garden feature, so I was always, like, you know, messing with the chows and stuff, um, but yeah, that was basically, uh, all that I, um, Played, I played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, like, nonstop. I played the story at least three times over. 
Uh, I did all the, like, challenges or stuff or whatever. I know there was, like, some weird challenge thing. Um, like, where each individual character had their own set of challenges that you could do or something. Like, finding these gems that were hidden or something. I know that was Knuckles, uh, one of his. Um, but anyway, moving on to the next game. Mm, Sonic Ad oh, no, that was, God, I just talked about that one. Uh, the game after that is Star Fox Adventures. Uh, that game was also probably one of my all-time favorites. Uh, I wasn't a huge into Star Fox. Like, the most exposure I had into Star Fox was, uh, Super Smash Brothers. And, uh... So I wasn't too familiar with him, but when I first, when I got this game, you know, it was like, it was kind of my first, like, mix of, like, flying missions and, like, um, ground missions. So, and, and I think you had to upgrade the staff along the way, too. I'm not sure, but it was my first experience with upgrading your items. So having that, you know, all those extra features kind of make a game great versus just good. So that game was, uh, I never actually beat it though. I could not beat Andros for the life of me. <laughs> I remember that part. I could not beat him. But, uh, so yeah, that, that game was, uh, really fun for me though. Cause, especially cause I never beat it. So I always had to like, sometimes, so I'd always go back to it when I was like bored and I wanted to beat something that I was stuck on. And it was always Star Fox Adventures cause I could never beat Andros. Um, but anyway, uh, on to the next game. Cause I'm running out of time. Uh, Medal of Honor Frontlines. You know, another first-person shooter game. Once I got into GoldenEye, I really got into the first-person shooters, so when I got Medal of Honor Frontlines for the GameCube, I was actually really into World War II at the time. Like, it was my favorite war, and, you know, you go through that stage where you're like, oh, I like this war better, but, like, <laughs> even though they're all massacres and atrocities, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, Medal of Honor Frontlines, easily one of my favorite GameCube games. I played it over at least four times, probably, because the campaign was relatively short. Um, let's see here. Uh, after that, we get into 007 Nightfire. Uh, and if you played that game, I don't need to explain anything about it, because if you like 007, or James Bond, whatever, if you like that, and you liked, you know, the video games, then you liked Nightfire. There was, Nightfire was easily probably one of the best James Bond games ever. Um... Maybe having some competition with GoldenEye because it was a classic, but <laughs> Nightfire was great. The graphics um, for the consoles, uh, <laughs> I have a PC version of it, and uh, it's nothing like the actual console game. The graphics are terrible. It's terrible. It's all <laughs> The PC version was terrible. The console version, all the graphics were revolutionary. Uh, the story was fantastic. You know, all the stuff you could do was like the doing it the sneaky way or doing it the like running in guns blazing way you know that whole that whole thing was that game was revolutionary for James Bond games then it kind of went downhill from there but uh <laughs> anyway moving on the Tony Hawk's underground games um one and two I had both of them for the GameCube I believe and uh this I remember almost everything from the second one including that they had the warehouse level from the very first game so that was really nostalgic for me uh, so that that was a huge plus for that game for me but uh Anyway, I was still into skating at the time regardless, so, you know, the Tony Hawk series was still kind of going strong in my gaming, uh, so, in my gaming history, so, you know, but that's kind of the last, uh, Tony Hawk games I played. I didn't play anything after the Tony Hawk's Underground series because, you know, they all started to feel the same, you know, over the top, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm moving on because I'm getting caught up again. Uh, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, like I said game series that I like make comebacks as did Tony Hawk as did as now is Mortal Kombat um Deadly Lance is fun because they introduced the impaling um you could like impale your enemy with your weapon and then they'd slowly lose health throughout the battle so you know it gave you kind of an edge if you impaled your opponent but you know it wasn't so drastic that it was a game decider that's also when they introduced the third dimension um of the playing field which was kind of a turn off for me because you know uh, it just didn't feel more like Mortal Kombat that way. But anyway, still easily one of my favorite GameCube games. Um, last game for GameCube, though, was Splinter Cell Conviction. No, Splinter Cell Conviction, Jesus Christ, no. That would be way ahead of its time. Um, Splinter Cell, the very first one. Um, I love games where you have to be stealthy and precise. That's how I love to play all of the games that I have. I like to be sneaky and precise. I don't like to run in guns blazing, you know. That's just my style, so... Splinter Cell was a home run when it came to me. 
Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna like not continue on with that. I could probably talk about Splinter Cell forever, but well, not really. I could talk about all these games for quite a while actually. But anyway, on to PS2. Um, probably one of my favorite 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 games of all time, even above all the other favorites, is Resident Evil 4. I had that for PS2. And I was happy I did because it had Ada's story. And I am like 90% sure that the GameCube version didn't have it. So don't. <laughs> I know all the GameCube fanboys are going to come at me like for this. But I am like 90% sure that GameCube didn't have it no matter what you say. Um, but regardless, I like seeing how Ada's story tied into yours and stuff. But Resident Evil 4, uh, easily one of my favorite games of all time. Probably like number one, if not number two or three, somewhere in there. Um, PS2 games, next one, well, okay, yeah, it's the next PS2 game, Resident Evil 4, I still have for the PS2, as I said, but, um, the next one, though, is The Sims, and The Sims Bustin' Out, the very first Sims game, and then The Sims Bustin' Out was, the, I think, the one right after that, uh, like I said, I enjoy most Sims games, so those two games, you know, you know, uh, it, it, they were just fun for me, because I got to, me you know, it was fun, to, it's fun just to mess around in The Sims, if you haven't played The Sims, you should try it. Uh, <laughs> next game is probably another one that's close to the top five for me, and that's uh, GTA San Andreas. Uh, if you played that game, I don't need to say anything, because everyone who played it know that game, knows that game was great. Um, other than the whole, you know, hidden hidden mini game, I don't, I'm not going to go into much more detail than that, but the fact that it almost got GTA off the shelves uh, was pretty funny. A couple of uh, the next, uh, sorry, these are the next games. A couple of the, these are just a couple of honorable mentions, though. They wouldn't say they're my favorites, but uh, 25 to Life. If uh, that game was fun because it introduced like a game type that I'd always been looking for, and that was like a cops and robbers type deal. Like a bunch of gangsters would run around and like rob places, and then the police, the people who were playing as the police, had to come and stop them. Uh, pe other people were gangsters, of course. You know, it was a it was a team based thing. I'm not sure if it was like free roam or if it was just a game type, but where you had to like stay in a certain area. But whatever. Um, it was kind of like actually when I come to think about it, the game itself was kind of like a, a um, an embryo of Saints Row. I, I I know that's a weird comparison, but like Saints Row kind of plays the same way, but it just added more to it. But anyway, if you haven't tried it, you should probably try it. If you still have a PS2, you know, try it or at least get some emulator or something. But anyway, the next honorable mention is uh, Def Jam Vendetta. I was really into rap back then, so it was basic, and it was basically um, like actual hip hop stars like ex Exhibit, and I, I can't remember anymore because I'm not into rap, but <laughs> um, not anymore anyway. But uh, basically, a bunch of them, and it was Mortal Kombat style like uh fighting but in like a wrestling arena so it, it was really a unique style game but it was still fun it was like this whole idea of underground fighting and stuff it was fun um the next uh, game that i actually have on my favorites the honorable mentions are done with um is rainbow six lockdown um that was uh my first rainbow six game after the very first one for n64 the very first one for n64 was fun and i probably should have put that on the on the list too I just remembered it now, though. But yeah, Rainbow Six Lockdown. Uh, fun game, great campaign. Loved everything about it. All the weapons and stuff made it great. I didn't get to play multiplayer too much, though. Um, Moving on, Blitz the League. That was the first uh, Blitz game that introduced the bone-breaking animations and stuff, so that game... And like I said, it's over the top, so I enjoyed it. Um, Mortal Kombat <laughs> Armageddon. I actually wrote Deception, but it's Armageddon. I didn't like Deception as much, but um, Armageddon was fun. Armageddon was good for me because it let you make your own fighter, so I actually really liked that about that game. That was my favorite thing about that game is that you can make your own fighter. I hope I'm not wrong and it's actually Deception, but I'm pretty sure it's um, Armageddon. This is just off the. I'm just mem. This is just from memory, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 90% sure it was Armageddon. Um, so that made that game great for me. And the last one I'll mention for PS2 is. Uh, Guitar Hero 2, that was my first Guitar Hero game, and for all my personal friends, I don't even need to say anything about it, because they all know how much I know life Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Um, probably more Rock Band in the long run, because once I got my Xbox and got Rock Band, then it just kind of went from there, and I stopped playing Guitar Heroes. 
Uh, granted, I did get World Tour along the line, but still wasn't that great compared to the Rock Band stuff, so. But that's personal opinion. If you like Guitar Hero better, there's nothing wrong with that. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up this commentary. Um, I'm going to have to actually add more video because I went way past, I went, not way past, I went about a few minutes past the uh, video here. So I'll add a few more to the video, uh, another clip to the video here that continues a little more of it. Um, but thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next episode.